All right, on to the offensive line. I guess, Tim, we'll go to you. Uh, it's not been the best of units uh, since James Franklin took over in regards to, you know, really going way back almost a decade now, uh, it getting hit with all the scholarship reductions and uh, the aftermath of the issues at that point and re really never getting to that place of elite status uh, in the Big Ten. Yeah, and I think I think it's something that even goes beyond uh, before James Franklin. Um, I guess there was maybe the first year of Bill O'Brien, twenty twelve, when it was, I guess, a pretty good unit, and then I guess it was okay in twenty thirteen. But then you know by twenty fourteen, the sanctions had really were really starting to um, affect the program, and it was no more pronounced than on the offensive line. Back then, they come to the field at two deep of scholarship guys. I think they had seven or eight scholarship offensive linemen in Franklin's first year. So it's pretty dire then. I remember, yeah, there's an iconic photo of two Penn State guys blocking each other. Um, <laughs> one of their – I think it was in the game. Against it was Northwestern, yeah. Home, yeah. Homecoming <laughs> in 2014. <laughs> I was at that game, but yeah, you have an iconic foot. And then, you know, I guess to see the, the O-line struggle the way it did in 20, you know, last year, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I thought we were beyond those types of struggles. Um, I thought that was something that was going to be in the past with the uh, sanctions, but unfortunately I think it's a combination of, you know, some combination of some medical hardships, um, one of their best offensive line recruits from 2018, Nana Sidu, had to had to medically retire as a, when he came in after getting his physical done, and they realized there was a enlarged heart. And then, you know, other guys who maybe just didn't quite pan out the way you'd hope they would. Uh, and I guess, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess you could say also, it, I'm sure, you know, having you know changing offensive line coaches, um, Trout, Phil Troutline, I guess to his credit lately, he's been crushing it on the recruiting trail with the 2023 kids. Um, but, you know, as far as on the field production so far, the first couple of years, it's let a lot to be desired. Um, I know there's been some debate amongst us in the Black Diaries Slack channel over whether, you know, Trout should have, should have been fired or not, but, I don't know, if you ask me, I think it's good he's coming back again just to – I just don't think it's good to continually keep shuffling coaches on the O-line because they they do bring – they do kind of bring different philosophies. on So you want to have some consistency there. And now that they're crushing the recruiting trail especially, I I really hope that, they you know, year three under Trout is when the O-line starts to make some strides. So I'll say I think it helps uh, – I'll do respect to Mike Miranda. I'm sure he's a good kid, but I think it's addition by subtraction that he's that Juice Scruggs is going to replace him now on that center. And then, you know, you get, they're projecting guys like uh, Owolf uh, you know, Landon Tangwall, who is a highly touted recruit from the 2021 class, pipe also starting. Um, Sal Wormley, who was hurt last year, didn't really see much action. He's a guy that the staff's been high on and would be a projected starter, assuming he stays healthy. And then Caden Wallace, you know, we'll see. Hopefully he can turn it around. He's a guy that I know the staff's been high on. Didn't quite come together for him. Uh, and then you got a key guy out of the transfer portal, Hunter Norzad, who played at Cornell. And I know Penn State got him over the like. I know Iowa and Illinois were his other two finalists. And I know what you're thinking. Well, oh, he beat out Iowa and Illinois. Well, if those two programs really want this kid, and they you know, knowing their philosophy on offense, I think it's a great get for Penn State because it sounds like a guy who can, who can run block for you, who can probably pass protect well enough. Uh, you know, it's definitely a kid I'm glad to have on board. Maybe he can carve out a starting role for himself, or at the very least, uh, he's a guy who should factor heavily into the rotation. So. You know, again, these these things, uh, these little things give me some hope that you know we'll have a serviceable offensive line this coming year. 
Yeah, I mean, I like to think the offensive line can't be worse than last year. Um, it's money back, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's – and I, I do think, you know, like you said, the Mike Miranda thing, not the crap on the guy, but definitely seems to be addition by subtraction type of deal. And I think Juice Scruggs moving from guard to center will be a, will do him a lot of good. And you also mentioned uh, with Nana Asedu, well, Juice Scruggs was the same recruiting class as Nana Asedu was – and Scruggs missed, what, a year and a half or something? Because he was in a car accident when she broke his back, and it wasn't even sure he'd ever go to walk again, let alone play football. So he's a guy who, now that he finally has that full healthy season under his belt of 2021, I'm sure that'll only do a world of good for him. Um, I, I'm really excited about the potential of the left side of the offensive line. I think Landon Tangwall is going to be a dude for them. Um, like you said, former top 100 recruit. Last year as a true freshman, played – what was it? I think the final four games of the season pretty, pretty significantly. And you didn't notice him. And if you don't notice an offensive lineman, that's usually a good thing. They're like referees. Unless you notice them, the better, because you know, they're doing their job well. Um, so he's probably your starter at left guard, left tackle, most likely Olu Fushanu, who I think he will be a redshirt sophomore. I want to say now. And he's a guy who I know the staff has sky high hopes for. And he's another guy started in the outback bowl, started against Rutgers when a lot of the team was sick. Um, and in both those games, you didn't notice him. He went out there and just – he held up well. And, you know, those are the kind of things with young offensive linemen that give you hope for the future. I think Hunter Norzak coming in is going to be a big addition. Right tackle is definitely, I think, the biggest question mark right now. Um, Caden Wallace was also a very highly – rated recruit. I think he was like the 70th best player in the country, something like that by two, four, seven sports in his recruiting class, but he was recruited as a guard has been kicked out the tackle because of Penn state having depth issues at tackle. And he's just not a tackle. Um, I think as of now, he would still be your starting right tackle. I think that's going to be your biggest question mark is getting that right tackle position figured out. Um, Olu Fashani left tackle is going to, and, and, and tangle left guard. It's going to be the first year starters. They're going to take some lumps, but ultimately I think those guys are talented enough. They work it out. Like I said, I really like Scruggs at right at center. Uh, Hunter Norzad, like you mentioned, and I know people are going to make the lazy comparison to Eric Wilson. They brought him from Harvard last year as an Ivy league guy, but it's night and day. Um, Norzad was actually a guy who I remember Brian Doan of uh, national reporter for two, four, seven sports talking about this. He had like a fourth or fifth round grade for the NFL draft. This guy easily could have been drafted, but wanted to go play a year in the big 10 with the hopes of turning into a first, second, third round pick. So it's not like Wilson where Wilson didn't have this draft grade and didn't, you know, he had to move up to try and reach the NFL. NFL teams would draft Norzad if he was in the draft this year. So, you know, Penn state as weird as it may sound against Penn state has not had a lot of offensive linemen drafted in recent years. So having draftable offensive linemen is a big step in the right direction for the Nittany lions. And for that right tackle spot to circle back to that, I know they continue to hit the portal for tackles. Um, Tyler Steen, who has been a two-year starter at Vanderbilt at left tackle, is expected to officially visit this month some point as a potential transfer right tackle. Um, Jimmy Christ is a guy they like a lot who is slowly but surely coming along over there at right tackle. And if you absolutely had to, Tangwall can kick out the tackle and play there because you have more options on the interior. Like you mentioned, Sal Wormley, getting him back from injury will be big. You have Norzad. You have Drew Scruggs who can play inside. Um Nick Dawkins is another player at center. They like a lot as an interior offensive lineman. So I, I think with Penn state, with the spring, when people watch the blue white game and they see the offensive line struggling, I think it's, it's going to be easy to get concerned about the season, but people need to remember too, the offensive line will look a lot different in the fall. Um, Wormley's coming off of injury. We're not going to see a lot of him. Norzad doesn't enroll till May. Tangwall and Fashanu are going to take a lot of those freshman type bumps this spring. So you're going to see a lot of growth and even some addition to the offensive line between now and the fall. Things could come through with Tyler Steen. Um, I'm sure there's going to be other offensive linemen that may pursue in the portal. So while the offensive line is going to be far from the finished product this spring, I think by the time they kick off in West Lafayette on September 3rd, you're going to see a better offensive line than last year. And, you know, Tim, the with Phil Troutline, I have definitely voiced my displeasures with Troutline. <laughs> but with how well he's done with recruiting, I'm with you to where unless the offensive line is just a complete disaster again this year, I think you have to give him another year because he's recruiting so well at the position. Let him not just get his guys in here, but getting guys who – I mean, I mean, right now Penn State has two five-star offensive line commits in the 2023 class. Like you've got to get those guys to campus. 
let them work with their coach. And, you know, at that point, things don't pan out. They look to make a move. But, yeah, I think the offensive line will be better. How much better? I don't know. And that's probably going to dictate where this season goes for Penn State is how much growth this offensive line makes. If they can make that jump to being good, you know, they have the talent on offense as long as Sean Clifford is healthy and the Sean Clifford we saw the first five games of last year to come bounce back and win 10 games. They definitely have that kind of talent on offense. But if this offensive line comes out and continues to struggle, you know, you're going to struggle to run the ball. You're going to get your quarterbacks beat up as we've seen and just things collapse from there. So the the biggest factor for the 2022 Nittany Lions, in my opinion, is going to be this offensive line. How far can they come between now and September? And, you know, as we mentioned, there's tons of reasons for concern, but there's definitely some reasons for optimism. Players improving, players who are going to be added, players who they've lost to, you know, another guy, Rashid Walker, who – just never put it. He was really good as a freshman in 2019 to seem to get worse as his crew. I mean, I know he had, he had a lot of injuries last year, but just you're going to get fresh faces in there. You're going to get guys back. It's, it's, it's what the season is going to come down to is that offensive line play. It's usually not reasonable to expect a, a true freshman to come on and uh, make a major impact, especially one that's not an early enrollee, but just to note Drew Shelton, of course, uh, the top rated, uh, offensive tackle in the class, 12th rated in the country. And also I was curious about uh, J.B. Nelson uh, comes into this recruiting class, but he's a junior college guy, but he was rated uh, the top tackle uh, from the JUCO ranks. Yeah, I think Nelson is a guy who could definitely factor in not just the right tackle, but potentially the interior also. Um, I know the early reports on Nelson, since he's been on campus in January, great work, uh, great work ethic, excuse me. Um, he's a player who's had a relationship with the staff for a long time. He's originally from the Pittsburgh area. Um, it's just a matter of can he get up to speed from the JUCO level to the FBS level between now and September? If he does, that's a huge addition to this offensive line. Even if he doesn't, I still think Nelson could have a very bright future down the road with Penn State. Um, he was a guy who, if you'd watch his film from the spring season that JUCO played last year and then the fall season they played – looks like a totally different player. He made a ton of strides. It's just going from JUCO to the FBS level, the difference in the weight program, the nutri- the nutrition program is just so significant. So I think with Nelson, I have no doubts the talent's there eventually. I have no doubts he's going to put in the work. It's just how, is his bo- how quickly basically is his body going to respond to this? Excuse me. And if he can get to where he needs to be in terms of strength and his physical form by September, I would not be surprised – to at some point this season see him factor in as well. And, you know, that would obviously go a long way for Penn State, especially if Caden Wallace does struggle at right tackle again and Nelson could potentially, you know, be of assistance at right tackle. 